Hey everybody, it's Carol with Refunction Crafts. I'm coming to you with another video today on um, how to make one of these beautiful little um, pill boxes out of a simple silver tin. So that's what we're going to be doing today. Now I purchased these tins, or I purchased, I was sent a bag of these tins by bbcraft.com and um, this was something I chose. They sent me some products and asked me to do a review on these products and how I liked them. What I like about these tins is they come to me smooth like this. It's a smooth tin. They have a screw-on lid and that's why I'm doing pill boxes with these because they're not the kind of lids that you that you put on and they just kind of have a suction down and you wonder if they're going to open up in your purse. These actually have a screw top and the first thing that I'm going to do with this, um, I'm going to be using this one here that I've already painted white and I didn't um, add the painting process in this video because everyone pretty much has a good idea on how to paint something. This is just acrylic paint that I used and the first thing that you want to do with these tins is take sandpaper and rough up the top, the sides, and make sure that they're just rough enough that the paint will grab. Go around all of the edges here. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to make sure there's a scratch in every little orifice on this thing, um, but you want to get it rough enough that your paint is actually going to stick to this tin. So that's about all you need to do with that. And you can see this one has a scratchy surface now all the way around. So that's the first step to this. And what we're going to do is we're going to be Mod Podging um, an image on the top of this tin. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take this image here and this is just sort of watercolor flowers and determine where I want what portion of this image do I want to appear on the top of this tin and I definitely want this purple flower some of the greenery and so forth to show up on this so I'm just going to take my pen just using a regular pen here and I'm going to mark around the lid on this, draw my circle, and take my scissors and I'm just going to cut that circle out but I'm going to make sure that I'm going inside the lines whoops, that I drew for the circle. So I want to keep it on the inside because when you draw the circle around the outside of the tin, it's going to actually be slightly larger. Oops, I'm sorry, I need to stay in frame. It's going to be slightly larger than what you what will fit on the top of the tin, and you don't want your edges to hang over on this. So I'm just going slightly inside these lines from my circle that I drew on this piece of paper. Okay, so there we have it. Throw your extra away. And this is just an image that I had laying around that I had printed out a long time ago um, that I'm going to use. Okay, so that's going to go right on the top of this tin just like that. And to do that, I'm going to use my Mod Podge. And this Mod Podge I buy um, this size container is available at the Dollar Tree, um, obviously for a dollar, and I usually keep a couple of these around for my Mod Podge projects. Um, I don't do a lot of Mod Podging, um, and what I do uh, is usually very small um, items uh, until I get into, I actually make bottle night lights. Um, and when I'm doing those, I definitely use a lot more Mod Podge because I use some, some large bottles at times. Okay, so I'm going to take this lid and I'm just going to 
paint this Mod Podge on the outside. I want to make sure I have plenty of Mod Podge so this is going to stick. And just um, an FYI for you, this stuff dries really, really fast. Um, so you want to work fairly quickly with it if you can. Um, I mean, it's not so fast that you can't, you know, you don't have a little time to, to work with it. But it does dry pretty darn fast. And you want to make sure that you get your piece positioned correctly on the top so that it's centered. You might have a couple of little edges on the top where it's, it's not covering. That's okay. Um, because we're going to be embellishing the top of this pillbox. And so we want to... Um, we, we don't need to worry about, you know, there being a little bit of an edge on that. It's going to look great regardless. So make sure you're pressing the center of this. Press it out. Get all the bubbles out. And then I usually take and paint a little bit more Mod Podge over the top of the image. Now, sometimes I like to wait until it has dried underneath. But in this case, for video purposes, I'm going to go ahead go over the top of this and I see a little bubble there so I'm going to press that out and go over it and that just seals it in so that the top is sealed the edges are sealed and this piece is not going to come off the top so okay so we've got our Mod Podging done that was easy and next, what we're going to do is we're going to start embellishing um, the outside of this. And what I'm going to use today are these little pieces of um, bling that a friend of mine sent me. Um, uh, my friend Carol sent me some little sheets of this bling, and it came with these and some little square pieces. So I cut these off of that so that I could use it around the edges of this pillbox. And on this other one that I did, um, came out super pretty. I used the square pieces to go around the edges on this one. So I wanted to do something a little different on this one and use the, um, the circles. And these are probably a little more sparkly than the squares are. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a bead of E6000 and I'm going to go around the outer edge of this and I'm going to try and center this first piece on that bottom section and I'm going to get it going first here and then I'll kind of look at it and see actually Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just butt it up against the lip, and that way you kind of have a guide so that you keep this piece um, straight. And luckily, um, there's just enough space uh, to make that fit. And I think what I'm going to need to do actually is I'm going to need a little bit more of this um, to fit this piece. So I'm, this is what the piece looked like to begin with. Super pretty, really sparkly. And I am going to, for some reason I was thinking that that was going to fit exactly around because the square ones did. But I was wrong, so we're just going to cut another strip of this off of here so that we have the extra pieces we need to add and I think on this one I'm going to need three so right now I'm just going to cut those three off make sure you trim the little extra fuzzies that are on the edges of this um, that's sort of a pet peeve of pet peeve of mine that I do like everything to be clean um, when I put it together so that uh, actually we only needed two of those so that it looks as nice as possible um, 
because especially if you're giving this as a gift or if you're selling something like this, you want it to look professionally done. So, okay. So we added those two extra pieces. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the next section, which is this lid. And we're going to put some right around. Now there's a section of this that looks like it's part of the screw top and I want to cover that up because I really don't think that that's super pretty. <laughs> um, so that's part of this tin that I would like to cover up and make it pretty. So I'm just going to go around this edge with my E6000 and I'm going to take this second piece and sort of butt it up against that um, that lip again and I'm going to have a perfectly straight piece. Now the top is actually slightly bigger than the bottom so I think I'm definitely going to need the three a section of three pieces to go on that. Now with these tins they actually come in a package of 30 tins and the price on these, uh, let me just give you that, the price on the tins is $16.99 for 30 of these tins. That's an excellent price. I know I buy uh, some of my other tins on Amazon and so that price is very comparable to what I pay on Amazon, but I'm getting 30 tins. I'm actually getting more tins for my money. So um, I'm super happy with these tins. They're very, very lightweight, which is good when you're putting something in your purse. You don't want anything too heavy. Now, when I add my embellishments to it, yes, it does make it slightly heavier. Um, which is all the more reason to have a more lightweight tin. So this is what the tin looks like so far. Pretty already. But we're going to um, add some more to this. And the next thing that I'm going to use is this rhinestone chain that I also got from BB Craft. Uh, BB Craft sent me a package of um, five items that I chose myself, um, items that I would normally use in my crafts, and um, they wanted me to review those items for quality and uh, customer service, shipping, all that good stuff. So um, I did do a video for them, uh, which was a review video, and I found really all of the items to be of um, decent quality. And the shipping, um, I ordered everything that I got from them this time around was from the U.S. warehouse. And um, I received my items in four days. And that's amazing. Um, now I know that if you order, they have a China warehouse and they have a U.S. warehouse. And so if you order from the China warehouse, it's obviously going to take more time to get to you. Um, and that was the purpose for me ordering only from the U.S. warehouse this time around. If they give me another opportunity to do this, I will order from the China warehouse and see how, um, how quickly I get those items. And they have some other items that I really, really would like to try out um, right now. I don't have the extra money to purchase a lot of stuff right now but I would like to try some of their other items out. Um, they have this rhinestone chain available in four millimeter, which is what I generally will use, uh, but I could only get it from the China warehouse, so I went ahead and just ordered. This is 2.6 millimeter rhinestone chain, and it's got a gold back to it, um, but I'm really enjoying using it because on these smaller items, the small fine chain works perfectly. So what I do, is I take and put my glue along the outer edge again and I'm going to make sure that when I put these rhinestones on that they are pointing upwards to the top of the tin. 
We don't want to put our rhinestones on so they're facing the outside. A lot of people tend to do that. And for me, it just doesn't give the look that I want. I want, when someone's viewing this piece, I want them to see the rhinestones from the top, not from the side. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to run it around the edge. And the best way to do that is to turn it sideways so that you're looking straight at the piece. And I'm just going to lay these rhinestones sideways on the edge of the tin so that they look like that. Oh, I didn't give myself enough slack there. Okay. Um, and make sure that you're checking how they're laying on that tin as you go around. And as you can see with the E6000, this is not even falling off because these are so lightweight that they just, once they're stuck on there with the E6000, they pretty much stay. So I'm going to cut this at... this rhinestone, whoops, and I hurt the one next to it. It didn't feel right to me when I was cutting it. Okay, so we got that. And so here we have it. We're gonna check the rhinestones, make sure they're all pointing upwards. And sometimes what I'll do, just to make sure that they are lined up nicely is I'll put it upside down and sort of press these down so that they're all lined up. We want it to look as straight as possible when we're looking at it even from the side view. And the way to do that is to press these down so that you see the bottoms pointing straight up. And you're gonna have a perfect, perfectly lined up piece. And there you have it. There it is with the rhinestones. And you can see they're sideways and they look nicely lined up from the side view as well. Okay, so we're done with the rhinestone. And again, this rhinestone came also from um, BB Craft and I paid uh, $6.99 for 10 yards of this rhinestone. That is an excellent price, you guys. Um, I was very pleased with the pricing and the quality is working out wonderfully for me. Um, with the exception of my own mess ups when I cut into a, a part of the rhinestone, um, they are holding up very nicely. I don't have any missing rhinestones so far in what I've used, so I'm really, really pleased with these. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do, and this is sort of a mixed metals piece, as you can see. I've got gold and I've got silver on there, and I like to mix my metals when I'm um, making my pieces because to me, I, I'm, I'm kind of quirky that way. I don't like things, even when I'm hanging pictures on a wall or something. I don't like everything to be in a straight line. Um, I'm more one of those people that has to hang things kind of off kilter a little bit. So uh, anyway, next thing we're gonna do is decide what we're gonna put on the top of this. And I have a lot of blingy pieces here. These pieces over here are gorgeous. My friend Judy was out shopping and she found these at Walmart they were having their um, usual sales on these blingy necklaces and she knows I can get a lot out of each necklace um, so she picked me up three of these to use in my crafting products or projects um, and then the necklaces also came with earrings so we have the necklaces and we have these great earrings that I can use as well and then we have these pretty round ones I'll just put those there so these were all part of the package 
Thank you, Judy. I greatly appreciate it. You know how much I appreciate your kindness and your generosity. And um, I use everything she sends me. She's always sending me something. If she's out and about shopping or whatever, um, she will see something that she thinks I must have and she'll pick it up for me. So um, I am forever indebted to her for that. Um, okay, so we have that on. We're going to decide what we want to put on here. And actually, I'm going to see what I think will look the best on this. And actually, I think one of these pieces would be really pretty. So I'm just going to take this and at the attachment sections, where the ring is, I'm just going to cut that off. And this one is very strong. Um, and then I'm going to go to the other side and cut this section off. Wow, can you hear that? What a snap. <laughs> and then I want to cut this little center piece off too. Okay, so we have this really pretty pearl and rhinestone button piece now. And I'm going to find a spot where I think I might want to put that. And also, um, I may use a couple of my little my little onesies flowers. I don't know. Let's see. I want to make sure they will go with the piece first. You guys know how much I love these little embroidered flowers, so I've been using them on everything. Um, but they really, they provide a more vintage look um, to these pieces, so that's why I like them so much. And then I also um, plan on using in this project some of these um, little, actually I'll use these, uh, these little aluminum roses that I also got from BB Craft. Um, and they're so pretty. I used to use these um, years ago and then I had, um, like five or six of these left over from, I mean, when I'm talking years ago, I'm talking 15 years ago. And I had a couple of these left over, I think they were red, and used them in a couple of projects. Of course, they're all gone. They've been gone for a couple of years now. And when I saw that BB Craft had these little aluminum roses, I was super excited and I added those to my order. Now, what I'm gonna do with these is you'll see here I've got a couple of them that I have added little um, pearls to the center of. And so I'm going to add pearls um, to whatever I place in this piece. And I'm going to try and see, maybe I want to use those instead of my, um, my pretty... embroidered roses. I think I'm going to stay away from these embroidered roses on this project. Uh, I've used those enough. I think it's time to move on and use something else. So to put these pearls inside, I'm using these four millimeter um, acrylic pearls and I'm just going to add those to the center and these have a little like almost little pieces that stick up. I got to pull those out on both of these because I think I'm going to add a few of these flowers to this piece. I pulled those out. I'm going to add a little E6000 drop to the center of both of these little flowers. And then I'm going to take a little pearl I'm going to kind of hold it with the, the holes. I want to hold the holes with this so that I know exactly what direction it's going in. Because when you do this, you don't want your holes 
to show. You want the smooth part of the pearl to be at the top of this. So make sure you're mindful of that and you're not, um, you're not, you're not having those stick up to the top where everybody can see them. Makes a big difference in your piece. It makes it look more finished and more, um, more professionally done. So there we have it. We have two, three, and four. So I've got four of these little roses with the pearls. And maybe if I kind of go sideways. And they look really, really pretty. So I'm going to decide where I want to put those. I'm just going to kind of since that flower in the center of this is purple, these purplish ones look really, really pretty with it. But I always like to put some sort of contrasting color in my pieces um, because I just think it makes it, it, it makes it pop better. So I think I'm going to kind of try and see. And I generally, when I decorate something like this, I try and make it kind of go around the edge um, mostly on one side and maybe what I want to do on this is just add three of these aluminum roses and then maybe let's see oh, I have this little <laughs> this little lid that I keep little bits and pieces in that I think I might want to use in projects, and I don't know if I have any rhinestones in here or not. I usually do. But of course today I don't see any in there. I have another container that has some in it. Okay, so I'm gonna take One of these little rhinestone pieces, it's got a jump ring stuck in it. Okay, this is just a little tiny rhinestone piece that I'm just going to kind of stick off to the side probably, um, like right there, just as an added piece of sparkle. Maybe I want to add two of those. And I know I saw another one in here. There we go. And we'll put that one maybe at this end. And that looks super pretty, you guys. I'm, I'm actually happy with, um, with that. The only other thing that I would like to add to this is I've got these pretty little butterflies and flowers that my friend Carol sent to me. And um, they're just gorgeous. They have little spark, a little sparkle on them, but they're 3D. They're, they're made from paper but they're so pretty and I really, really, really want to use one of them in this project. So I think I'm going to take one of these butterflies and maybe put it right there. And look at that. That is just stunning. So that's where I'm going to go with this. And so I'm going to take my E6000 and I am going to work on gluing these pieces on. I'm going to try and keep them sort of in some sort of order so that I know where I want each piece to go. Um, and I don't mess up the effect that I'm, I'm trying to go for with this. So I'm going to spread E6000 across the bottom of this. And I'm going to place that one right on the edge there. And then I'm going to take this pink flower and she's going to go right there. I'm going to take this purple one and we're going to do this process fairly quickly, you guys. It's not like rocket science or anything. Um, you know, some of you may want to take more time with putting these together and that's fine too especially if you're a beginner and you're not quite sure about placement of items. Um, 
you know, you can always kind of come back to this video and have a look at it and see if, you know, it helps you with your placement of um, your pieces. But I get a lot of my pieces of jewelry that I use in my projects are um, pieces that I get from a little local shop here um, close to my home. And they sell a lot of blingy pieces, hair clips, uh, bracelets, earrings, necklaces, um, all kinds of stuff. And that's where I buy most of my bling. Um, but I was lucky enough this time to get this opportunity with bbcraft.com to um, do the, the, the uh, unboxing and the review of their products. And I am super pleased and excited to be able to use them. I just hope that they give me another opportunity in the future to try some more products because um, I would love to bring that information to you guys and let you know what I think um, would be some good products for you to use in your projects. Um, and I think what I'm going to do also, I'm going to take, nope, actually I'm going to change gears here. The other thing that I'm going to use is I am going to use some of these little, whoops, these little foam pieces that I purchased from a, my little local shop where I get a lot of my, my blingy pieces. Um, actually, none of these came from that shop, but um, I'm going to use these little foam sparkly glittered um, pieces, and I'm going to use these little purple ones because... They really go with this very well, and I am going to do it. I, I try to do um, my embellishments. If, if it's not just one embellishment, I'm, I try to do it in threes when I'm using small pieces like this um, because I think that it looks better. It gives a, a better feel. And um, it just seems to work better if you use three of an item. And I, I may make a couple of sections on this with these little foam bits. They are so, so pretty and so sparkly. And I'm super pleased that I found these. And I think I mentioned in my last video, I'm going to try and... Um, uh, set up some kits for some of my projects that you can do from home and use the same products that I'm using. And um, if I can put some of those together, I would like to put some in my shop and have them available for people that want the items that I'm using um, to do their own projects. So I think um, that's a really great idea, and I would like to make my stuff available to you all um, so that you can uh, enjoy them as much as I do. So I will be working on that and trying to put something together very, very soon. I'm going to put kits together for uh, making compact mirrors, tins, uh, maybe something like these little pieces if I can find enough of them. Um, to do and then uh, you know maybe some other little little things I think I'm gonna add a little pearl over to the side here where I've got this little blank spot put some e6000 and I'm gonna take this pearl and I'm gonna hold it with my I'm gonna hold this pearl with my pliers at the holes and I'm just going to lay it on top so that the holes are not pointing upwards. And that's what I do when I don't have the um, pearls that, that don't have holes in them. Because you can buy them without holes. Uh, but when I don't have those kind, I just improvise and use my beading pearls. So that's what it looks like so far. Last Thing I'm going to do on this is I am going to add a little bit of triple thick which is something I purchase on Amazon 
And then I'm going to put diamond dust. I'm going to sprinkle a tiny bit of diamond dust on top of that triple thick um, so that it has a little more sparkle and shine. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. I'm going to add this to the image here. So the triple thick is going to kind of go all across this area here. I'm not going to put a, a super thick layer of it. But I want enough that that diamond dust is going to lay on top. I want to spread it all the way to the edges here and try and get it in next to these other pieces that are sticking out, but not on the rhinestones. Folks, don't get this triple thick on the rhinestones because you don't want to dull your shine on those rhinestones. Okay. So I've got my triple thick on, close that up. You wanna make sure when you're using triple thick that you close that lid right away when you're done using it because it, uh, it tends to wanna to dry up very quickly and uh, as you get to the bottom of the container, it gets really milky and it gets to a point where you really don't even wanna use it at all if it gets too thick. So I'm just going to sprinkle the diamond dust across the top of this image. And this stuff is amazing. I know you guys see me use it in practically everything I do um, because it adds that sparkle. You see that sparkle. Oh my gosh, it's just amazing. I love this stuff. and. Um, I never would have known about diamond dust or the other thing that you can use is German glitter glass or German glass glitter. I'm not how they sure how they um, how they list it, but um, you can get that also on I believe Amazon and eBay. And this is actually um, crushed glass. And so this stuff definitely keep it away from kids. Um, it's not to be handled by children because they are, um, it is shards of glass that are broken up and you can see there, they're in little chunks, looks a little bit like sugar there, um, but you know, it, it, it could cut your fingers or, or get stuck in your finger and what I do is I take, once I get it on top of this, I take and tap it down so that those little pieces lay flat on top and that is the kind of sparkle that I get from this and again I'm going to show you it's going to be a little bit milky right now because of the triple thick it has to have time to dry but I'm going to shine more light on this so that you can see how sparkly that is not only from the rhinestones that I've used but also from that germ or from that diamond dust and this is a beautiful pill box all complete and then here's the other one that I did equally as pretty and I did not add diamond dust to this one but I think I will probably do that before I put it in my Etsy shop for sale or actually this one here I think I'm gonna do this one and send it to my um, my stepsister who has been asking for a pill box and um, it's been quite some time that she's been wanting one and I now have one for her that I can send so um, so these are my pill boxes Super easy to make. Check out bbcraft.com. Um, I'll I'll go ahead and provide a link to their um, to their website so that you can check these out and check out some of the other items that I've used. And just to kind of show you these little foam pieces that I get from my store, I want to add some of these into some of my kits. So I think I need to buy more of them. But they actually come in bags like this. This is the size of each bag that I get of these beautiful foam uh, pieces. So 
you get a lot of them and so I thought you know I could use these in my kits and um, hopefully I can get more of them when I go back to my little store um, because I really really like them and I think you guys will too. Uh, so anyways, that's it for now guys. I appreciate you stopping by and watching my video Make sure you check down below in the description menu. I'll provide you links to the rhinestone chain and these little aluminum roses as well as the diamond dust and triple thick and um, I guess that's it. Have a wonderful day and be blessed and um, We'll see you real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.